Brought to you by Digikinated Fruit this week. It's Ashram Lady Ada. What is this week's new product introduction, Ion MPI? Okay, yes. AMS Osram, they get the Burge, and AMS used to be Taos. Uh, have a new sensor out. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, this is a true color sensor called the TCS. Wait, let me get the right, exact right number. It's the TCS3530, but on Digikey, it might be the 3532. Uh, um, and this is that you can see the sensor in the middle. It's a fully embedded true color ambient light sensor with flicker detection. And this is what I thought was interesting. It doesn't give you RGB output. It gives you XYZ output and it can do um, flicker detection up to seven kilohertz. So this would be a sensor that you put in um, a monitor or a tablet or a phone or uh, printing equipment, something where you basically want to detect color. And uh, best of all, you want to get the color that is XYZ CIE space and not RGB space, which we'll show off in a minute. Um, one thing that I thought was pretty nice is that the sensor is not, it's not a super low cost sensor, but that's because they fully calibrate it and it's normalized. Um, and so it's, you're gonna get repeatable results for the sensor and also between sensors. So if you're using this chip in your product, you don't have to do another calibration step for each sensor, which you would have to do for low color. Um, I just wanted to put Cindy Lauper in here. True colors are beautiful. This, is this famous song in the 80s. Uh, so I sang it the entire time I put together um, this INMPI. So we've we've been selling stuff from Taos AMS for a long time. Um, and so I have a lot of experience with their sensors. So one of the first sensors we actually sold was the TSL 2561. This is a Lux light sensor with I squared C. Um, and it's a beautiful chip. And you know, basically they've got like decade plus um, of experience making light sensors and color sensors. Another really popular chip that we sold or still sell, the TCS34725 is an RGB sensor, um, which had interrupt output, I squared C, um, and you know, we wrote Arduino and, and CircuitPython and Python libraries for it. And this chip was great because it was one of the first sensors where you know, as long as you had some light bouncing off the object, you could detect the color. So in this case, you, know, you put the orange on top, you illuminate it with some white light, and then you can see the RGB LED. Um, you take the RGB color value, you normalize it, and you pipe it out to the LED, and it would get light kind of close. But RGB color space, although it is, um, you know, has a full like eight, you know, 24 bits, eight by eight bits by eight bits of, of red, green, blue color. It doesn't actually match what the human eye sees and how like we react to color because um, we have like these red, green, blue cones and they're like nonlinear. And, you know, we have a, a different way of what we can see on monitors and in paint and ink um, and in light it differs from just that RGB space. So the CIE, also known as the XY color gamut as shown here, is how most people, you know, especially in the center where you um, talk about temperature of light. Um, so like where that E is, that's kind of like, you know, the, the white color. And then as it moves around, you get different temperatures of light from like 3000 degrees um, incandescent up to like 6000, 8000 plus fluorescent or daylight. This is what like most people who do color calibration use and not like RGB, which is again, not true to what the human eye detects. Um, so the way the sensor does it is inside, there are uh, eight different PN diodes at the top there, um, X, Y, Z, and then, you know, infrared, uh, clear, et cetera. And, um, it goes into this engine, which can multiplex between the different diodes to, you know, we'd want each one and one after the other. There's the modulators for each one. Um, and the reason you need a modulator is because if you have flickering light, because you have fluorescence or you have halogen or incandescence that are plugged into 120 Hertz power, you're going to get a flickering effect. And so you want to make sure that when you read the sensor, you're not reading it during the flicker where you're going to get much lower values and when you're reading multiple times you're going to read consistently at the same time so you always get that same like normalized value right so if you're if you're going to read one wave forms worth of incandescent light you need to read like you know the period of 120 hertz 
consistently so you can get um, a full measure of light and not get like the trough or the mountain part of the um, reading. And so that's where the flicker detection uh, comes in because it'll help you determine like, oh, you're in front of a, a flickery fluorescent or incandescent or a monitor, which is going to be flickering at, you know, maybe 30 or 60 hertz as well. Um, the sensor elements are all arrayed in this like beautiful grid. Uh, I think if I had a scanning electron microscope, which maybe you have one, this would be a really cool sensor to um, scrape the diffuser off and, and get an image of. So the diodes are laid out in a way, you know, I've read once that the, the layout is actually important because you don't want like cross-contamination of electrical field and light uh, from sensor to sensor. So they're, they're laid out in this symmetric pattern um, so that when the light comes to the diffuser, you, you get an even amount of each um, element's light reading um, for that peak of uh, the frequency for that particular PN diode. So if you look here, they actually have the normalized spectral response. And again, one of the nice things about these sensors is that each one is, is calibrated at the AMS Osram factory. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, the 750 nanometer diode is going to be much more powerful than the, you know, 600 nanometer. And so I have to divide it by a certain number for it to, you know, equal out. So they've already done that for you, which is, again, part of the cost included in the sensor is that extra time that they spend to, to calibrate and trim it. Uh, so these are all of the diodes. So you can see it, it does cover like a really nice wide range from, you know, about 400, maybe 425, 450 nanometers up to about 750 to 800 nanometers. Um, and then this is the accuracy depending on the conditions. So you'll see you're going to get, of course, the best conditions are going to be at the, um, you know, 3000 ish to 5000 range. Um, but at least they do, they do document like, here's what your, uh, measurement accuracy is going to be for each color. And so maybe you can use that as part of your, uh, color tuning when you do the measurement, you're like, oh, I read it. I think it's a fluorescent 4k. Okay. I know that maybe I have to adjust it by a certain amount to, to match with the accuracy. I think I should be expecting. Okay. Um, one thing to note is uh, this is a fairly simple sensor to integrate. It's only got like eight pads on the bottom. Uh, it's basically just like power ground, uh, I squared C, IRQ, et cetera. But one thing to watch out for is it's not a 3.3 volt sensor. It's 1.8 volt um, maximum for the power supply and IO. So if you're going to use this with 3.3 um, volt microcontroller board, like a Raspberry Pi or something, you're going to need a level shifter. Second, it does have I3C support, which we covered in a previous INMPI. Uh, so if you have like a modern platform that you're developing for, you know, this is, you can kind of tell this is designed for like tablets, phone, something running Android um, or similar, you know, you'll, uh, you might be able to take advantage of I3C and then your interrupt pin, you know, can be part of like the in-band signaling and also you get uh, the higher speeds of I3C. For drivers, um, didn't look like there was anything from microcontrollers. The only driver I could find was a Linux driver, but it is fully published and it's in C. So it looked like it wasn't too bad to port over, but there are a lot of registers, like a like hundred registers. So definitely writing a library from scratch is going to be a challenge. I would start with the Linux driver and port it to your platform if you can't or are not able to use a kernel driver. And so that said, it is in stock right now. There's lots of them, 5,000. I ordered a couple. Um, might check out making a breakout board for this sensor. It's kind of cool. What, what is neat is that it has everything included. You don't need a lens, you don't need a diffuser. It's really like drop and go instantaneous and you get this pre-calibrated output. It's quite nice. Here's a question. Can XYZ plus I plus HG color space be converted into something like Kelvin? I believe that they do provide an algorithms to tell you what the color temperature is of the light. But usually you actually do want to have like the X, Y, H, G, I, R value and you feed it into your camera driver and you tell it like, hey, I detected that this is the light levels or to your monitor, like your monitor driver, you would tell it, hey, the ambient light is this. And so I want you to um, you know, change the color temperature of the of the pixels being written to the driver. Um, so this is like the two main use cases. And I'm pretty sure that you usually want the extracted out values and not just give it like six, you know, 6,500, you know, or 3,000 Kelvin. 
Um, but yeah, I think there's, if you have pre-calibrated XYZ values, then yes, you can absolutely convert that to temperature. And we have a video and then we'll uh, go to new part. Thanks. The sensor includes the silicon die with the photodiodes and a full optical stack with our latest XYZ filters and even a diffuser in one package at a size of only 2.5 by 1.8 millimeters and a height of 1.5 millimeters. There is nothing fancy about the demonstration device itself. We have only added batteries, buttons, an LCD and a microcontroller that runs our driver. The whole optical stack with the white diffuser on top is inside the little sensor package. There is only a typical cover glass placed above in the demo device, as you can see. Every single sensor is calibrated in our production test with a spectrometer and different kinds of ambient light with different color temperatures. The software driver takes this individual set of calibration values together with the actual raw data of the sensor to achieve high accuracy of the XYC values. And it derives LUX, CCD and chromaticity using CIE standard formulas. At the same time, the sensor captures flicker data as well and the microcontroller can find the main flicker frequency by doing a standard FFT calculation. That way, this sensor provides everything needed for camera assistance in smartphones, tablets and laptops. The full optical stack and the individual ambient light calibration of the sensor makes the integration into customer products easy and reduces time and cost on customer side.